Hey guys, welcome back to Reignited. This time around, we're discussing all things MDS related. What is MDS? How does this system work? Why did they install it in your engine? And most importantly, will it damage anything in your Gen 3 Hemi engine by leaving this system in place? All that and more in this episode, let's get straight into it. So then of course, our very first question, what does MDS even stand for in the first place? Well, it stands for multi-displacement system. All that means is that it's going from eight cylinders down to four cylinders to give you a fuel economy mode. Now there's a lot of different manufacturers that have a system similar to this. Chevy calls it the DOD, displacement on demand. It's the exact same system. You're just dropping down from eight cylinders to four. So again, MDS, multi-displacement system. Now, one of the reasons I want to make this video is because I feel like there's a lot of people who can kind of get these acronyms confused with each other. And a lot of times I see people interchangeably use MDS and VVT. That is not the case. MDS and VVT are two completely separate systems from each other. And in fact, I just made an extensive video talking about what VVT is and how it's used on your Gen 3 Hemi engine. If you want to take a look at that, go ahead and click right here or I'll put it in the description down below. Now, Chrysler introduced this MDS system starting in 2005. However, I have taken apart Gen 3 Hemi blocks all the way back to the first year of the Gen 3, 2003, and all of the exact same oil passageways are present on those blocks. So it was clearly always the plan to use this MDS system from the very inception of the Gen 3 design. Now, the reason for that is because they needed to have that additional fuel economy to help carry this engine through. The Hemi engine would have been taken out of production long before it was if it didn't have this MDS type system because it never could have met the mile per gallon standards that were necessary mandated by the government. So now let's get into the nitty gritty of exactly how this system is working. How is it shutting off those cylinders while you're driving? Well, it's a two part system here. It's being controlled electronically, but it's being actuated mechanically using oil pressure. Now let's take a closer look at the components involved with this system. What we have here is one of four solenoids that are used to turn on and off the MDS system. We're gonna talk about these a little bit later. But as you can see, I have the kind of the whole system laid out here so you can see how the engine works normally. You've got your rocker arm here, you have your push rods, your lifters, and your camshaft. So as the engine is running, this cam is spinning. These lifters are riding along these lobes here on the cam, which are actuating the push rods, which are then actuating the rocker arms to open the valves. So when the MDS system operates or when it turns on, we need to actually keep from opening those valves anymore in those specific cylinders. So we have specific lifters right here that when the system is turned on, the insides of these lifters will collapse, allowing the roller to still follow the cam lobe itself, but it no longer actuates the push rod and no longer open the valves for those cylinders. That's as simple as it gets for how the MDS system operates. Now, one of the misconceptions I've seen about this system is that some people tend to think that the cylinders that deactivate will alternate. That's not the case. It's always the same four cylinders that get deactivated. Cylinder one, four, six, and seven. Now, once this system is activated, those cylinders, the fuel injectors will shut off so that they're no longer delivering fuel. Now, in addition to that, there's something very interesting about how this system operates. It actually deactivates the cylinders on the compression stroke. So at that point, it still goes through the power stroke, but when the piston comes back up, it's not pushing those exhaust gases out of the cylinder. They remain in there, trapped in there, acts kind of like an air spring, so it gets pumped up and down. Now, I've heard that some people seem to have a weird problem with that, like they're not okay with that. There's nothing wrong with it, it works just fine. And there's a reason why they do it that way, because if they had allowed that exhaust to get pushed out the cylinder and then deactivated it on the intake stroke, will you be forming a vacuum inside that cylinder? And that would be drawing oil up into that cylinder, which would then burn off after you reactivate the cylinder. So having that compressed air inside the cylinder keeps the oil where it's supposed to be, doesn't get drawn in the cylinder and cause other weird stuff. So you can tell they did think this system through. Now notice here on the engine block that you have these oil passageways here. There's one on this side and one on this side. And if you go around to the back, there's one here and one here. Now these are four separate oil galleries that are cast into this block itself. They don't actually connect to one another. And that makes sense because you have four MDS solenoids here that go into the valley here underneath the intake manifold. And each one of those solenoids controls each bank right here. Now it controls a set of four lifters, one for a cylinder that's not MDS and one that is. Therefore, each of these MDS solenoids can independently control whether it deactivates that cylinder or not. 
Now my guess is they designed it this way instead of having one central controller to control the entire MDS system. That way, in case one of your MDS solenoids goes bad, you're only down one cylinder instead of down all four cylinders. That's just a guess though. Now these oil galleries that I'm talking about right here, they provide direct pressurized oil to the lifter bores themselves. Now why is that important? Now the reason it's important is because that pressurized oil activates these pins here on the sides of these MDS lifters. It collapses those pins and allows the center of the lifter to collapse and therefore you are no longer actuating the valves. Now one thing to keep in note here is that inside this lifter there is also another redundant spring that still keeps pressure on all these components so it doesn't just flop around in there while it's deactivated. That's not the case. It still allows it to follow properly along the cam lobe itself. So it's not slamming into the cam lobe or anything like that. I know that was a concern other people had that while this was deactivated that the head of this might be slamming up and down in the cam lobe. That's not what's happening. There is a redundant spring in there, but it's not enough spring pressure to overcome a valve spring. So therefore it still allows the lifter itself to collapse for every rotation. Now they started using this system in 2005, but does that mean that your vehicle automatically has the MDS system in it? Well, not exactly. There's a few models that didn't come with MDS. Primarily, if you have a manual transmission vehicle, you do not have the MDS system in there. The Hellcats, they don't run the MDS. And also Ram 2500 or 3500 trucks uh, running a 5.7 or 6.4, Sometimes they didn't come with MDS, sometimes they did. Those ones you're gonna have to look them up by VIN to find out if you have this system or not. But I will say that if you have a vehicle that is 2005 or newer with just a 5.7 engine and automatic transmission, chances are very likely that you do actually have this MDS system in your vehicle. Now we understand of course that they are using this system for fuel economy benefits, right? So what kind of benefits can you expect with your vehicle? Well, Chrysler claims between an eight and 15% fuel economy. I've talked to a lot of different owners and some say, oh yeah, I get even better than that. I talked to others who say, yeah, I don't get any benefit at all. And the reason for that is because it all comes down to driving style. If you're kind of a lead foot type driver, you really want to use that V8 power all the time, you're not going to see a whole lot of benefit from this system because there's only certain conditions that it will enable and actually run. But if you're someone who just likes to cruise a little bit, then you'll get a lot more benefit out of it. I've heard of people getting up to 23, 24 miles per gallon in some of the cars while using this system. I've never seen those numbers myself, but some people drive a lot lighter than I do. But again, other people say I've seen no benefit from it whatsoever and no change once I swapped out and just got rid of this MDS system altogether. So it kind of entirely depends on what kind of driver you are. All right, let's move into talking about some of the misconceptions about this MDS system. Now, so many people I've talked to say that the MDS system is the source of our lifter issues. Do I believe that? In a word, no. I don't believe that the MDS system is at all responsible for the lifter issues that we're having. Other people think that when they have lifter failure, that it's always the MDS lifters that are the problem. That is also not true. I have done quite a few cam and lifter issues in these Hemi engines over the years. And I would say maybe two to one is the ratio of MDS lifters to non MDS lifters, but that's not enough to say, oh, it's absolutely the MDS problem. Furthermore, on manual transmission vehicles that don't even have the MDS system, I have seen cam and lifter failure with those engines as well. I am not willing to at all state that the problem lies with the MDS system. Now, with that being said, that does lead me to some interesting points. So let's talk a little bit more about this oil flow through this engine. Now, personally, I believe it's very important to understand the pathway of oil through this engine that can help us have a better understanding of what exactly is happening and how we can prevent certain problems from happening. So as far as where the oil pressure is coming up through this engine, we're just going to focus on the top end of the engine. Now, if you look at the block here, you have a couple of locations where pressurized oil is flowing up through the block and up into our cylinder heads. Now, if you notice here on these two rocker stands, there's drilled oil passageways. So right here and right here, you have pressurized oil coming up those rocker stands. It goes into your rocker tubes, which are hollow, so they fill with oil. Then that oil gets transferred to the rocker arm itself. It moves down the push rod and it goes down into the back of your lifter assembly. Now that's the primary way that these engines receive oiling to the lifters themselves. Now all of these lifters are hydraulic roller lifters. That means the rear portion of the lifter has a little hydraulic bit to it, but it takes almost no oil to actually fill that. Therefore, 
while the engine is running, most of that oil is spilling out and around the lifter, going down the lifter bore and onto the roller lifter. Now, one of the things I see most in common with these Gen 3 Hemis that have lifter failure is that they have really high idle time on them. They're sitting and idling for a long period of time, or they're not doing their oil changes at the proper intervals, and therefore the oil is old and dirty and not providing the same kind of lubrication benefits that it should. Usually it's a combination of those two factors. That's why one of the things that I promote on my channel is installing a high volume oil pump to help prevent this from happening. Because if you think about it, if your engine is idling, that means the oil pump is spinning as slowly as it's going to be spinning while the engine's running, you're going to get the lowest oil pressure at that time. If you add a high volume oil pump, you're going to physically force more oil through the system. That means more oil is going into your lifters and onto those lifter rollers, helping to prevent this from happening. Now there's one more part of the oiling system that we need to talk about that plays a factor in all of this. These MDS solenoids that go in the block here, when the system is activated, they allow that pressurized oil flow to enter those oil galleries and go directly to the lifter bores. Now one quick point here, I'm sure after this video comes out that I'll get a ton of messages saying, why are you calling it an oil gallery? It's an oil galley. And in fact, I used to say that myself until I got corrected. In fact, a galley is a kitchen on a ship. So no, in fact, it is oil gallery. You can look it up for yourselves. I don't believe that these are a completely off solenoid at all times. I believe that they do allow a little bit of oil to go through the system at all times, even when the solenoid it's not, is not activated. Now that's another reason why I'm advocating for a high volume oil pump, because if we, if we can push just a little bit more oil through these solenoids, that's more oil that's going to our lifter bores at all times, and that can only be a good thing. Now, another question I get all the time from people is they say, what if I do install this high volume oil pump, then therefore I'm going to have that higher oil pressure. How does that higher pressure affect the MDS system? Does it make it to where it doesn't work properly? Well, it's a two-sided answer to that. One, I would say that the answer is no, the extra oil pressure does not actually cause it to function any differently, at least as far in my experience, because I have on my car, I've been running a high volume pump for several months now, and it's running the higher pressure than stock, and I've had no problems with the MDS system whatsoever. That being said, in order for the MDS system to actuate properly, it needs to be reading within the correct range of oil pressure. So if you do put a higher pressure oil pump or a higher volume pump in there without addressing that, you will set a code and the MDS won't activate electronically. Now I have spoken in another video about how exactly to address this issue. So I'll go ahead and link that either right here or in the description down below and give you a timestamp to that exact portion where I talk about that issue. Now, many times when people contact me, they say, hey, the first thing I do when I get in my car is I turn that MDS system off because I don't want that running while I'm actually running my vehicle because they think it's harming things. When I hope you can understand from what I'm showing you here that it's the exact opposite. If you actually turn that system off, you are keeping an essential oiling system from working properly on your engine because if the MDS never activates, it never opens these solenoids and it never provides that full oil flow to your lifter bores. Now the same thing is true for someone who's turned the system off completely using a tuner. They're actually keeping the engine oiling system from using its maximum efficiency. Now my recommendation, if you do wanna get rid of this MDS system for good, is you need to do more than just the tuner. You need to actually change the hard parts inside the engine. That means replacing the MDS lifters with non-MDS ones. You need to remove the MDS solenoids and replace those with plugs. And in so doing, you'll allow full pressurized oil flow to your lifter bores at all times. So you can see the benefits of both. If you get rid of the MDS system altogether, then you've got your full pressurized oil flow to your lifters at all times. Or if you actually leave the MDS system and let it work like it's supposed to, then you'll at least have intermittent oil pressure to the lifter bores. Now, currently I'm working on a system where I can set this engine up on a stand and actually pressurize the oiling system. And I'll be able to show you guys exactly what it is I'm talking about, but I don't have that ready just yet. Now, if you are looking to actually get rid of the MDS system entirely, what you'll want to do is you need to install these block off plugs right here. These come factory in vehicles that don't have MDS like manual transmission vehicles. And these actually take the place of the the MDS solenoids themselves. However, I'd caution you, do not install these plugs unless you are also installing the non-MDS lifters. If you just install these plugs and fire the engine up, you will automatically be in four cylinder mode. So replace the plugs, replace the lifters, and get a tuner so you can turn off the system for good. 
So as far as my overall opinion of the MDS system, I hope I've made it clear that I think it's actually a fairly decent system. I think it works pretty well. And honestly, if it's a daily driver type vehicle, I think you can get some decent fuel mileage gains by just letting it work as it's supposed to. Now, of course, if you have like a weekend race car or you're building a race car, of course, at that time, just get rid of that system because you're not worried about fuel economy gains and you wanna have that full V8 power at all times. So that situation, I completely understand. But I hope I've made it perfectly clear here that the worst option you can do is to leave the MDS system in place and then shut it off every single time you are driving. Now, another thing to make clear about this MDS system is that it requires a number of parameters before it will actually engage. The vehicle has to be up to temperature, has to be at a certain oil pressure, generally it has to be between a certain speed range. All of these things have to take place before this system will actually take effect. Now, another important factor of the MDS system is that it does not activate while the engine is idling. So imagine this scenario, your engine is idling the oil pump is currently producing the lowest volume of oil that it can, and those MDS solenoids are not allowing full pressurized oil flow to those lifter bores. So you can see why adding a high volume oil pump would be critical in that situation because you're gonna push that much extra oil into that system at a time when it needs it the most. There it is guys, that is the MDS system in a nutshell. Let me know, what do you think of these videos like the VVT and the MDS videos I've done? Do you like these sorts of things? Is there one in particular that you would like me to cover about the mechanical systems on an engine? If so, go ahead and put that down below. As always you guys, I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time on Reignited.